Hello everyone, uh, today I'm very pleased to be here and uh, to tell uh, you all about um, our uh, digital story, uh, the story of our digital transformation and um, uh, the way how we used uh, API for the open banking and how we used APIs for providing better service for our customers and expanding our products, expanding our uh, product range. So first of all, uh, let me introduce you to our company, to who we are. So we, our bank, Prior Bank, is a part of a larger group. Uh, it's uh, uh, called Raiffeisen Bank International. And uh, we mostly, um, the RBI group is mostly situated in the Europe region, uh, as well as the CIA. And um, we have uh, 13 subsidiary banks uh, in the region and uh, the whole group serves over 17.7 million customers. We have over 45,000 uh, employees and um, uh, also the, the RBI was established in 1987. So uh, moving to our, our subsidiary information about us. Uh, so Prior Bank uh, was established in 1989 in Belarus. And since uh, 2003, uh, we are a subsidiary of RBI, as I already mentioned. In our bank, uh, we have uh, over 840,000 employees and um, customers, sorry, and uh, over 1.6 thousand employees. Our total assets uh, is 1.8 billion uh, euros. And um, also, we, as a bank, we offer a wide uh, product and service range. Uh, we offer payment and account services, treasury services, um, expert financing, loans, uh, deposits. So basically, the, the full range of uh, financial services. Uh, also, in uh, this year, we've been awarded um, two uh, very uh, great uh, awards, uh, which is um, Best uh, Bank in Belarus by Global Finance and by EMEA Finance, as well as Best Investment Bank in Belarus, also by EMEA Finance. And um, to continue, um, um, uh, to continue my story, I would like to uh, give you a quick introduction for the uh, to the open banking. I think a lot of people are already familiar with it. A lot of uh, people who are watching us today a lot of, already know what open banking is. But uh, for us, open banking emerged um, based on three main drivers. Uh, first one uh, is innovation strategy. So basically, we have a very clear strategic vision for the next five years, uh, which is um, uh, as follows. Like, we are the most recommended, we want to be the most recommended financial services group. Basically, for us um, to be able to be like that, we have to be always ahead of the competition. We uh, always have to innovate. We always have to provide the best uh, service possible for our customers and for our partners, basically for all of the stakeholders. Uh, also, we are really striving to be as digital as possible. This is one of the, our main objective, objectives. Um, and um, the solutions that we provide uh, have to be innovative. Otherwise, uh, it, it will be very difficult to us uh, to have a competitive advantage. And um, our main value is uh, our customers. And we are creating the value for our customers. So basically, um, we are transforming innovation all the time. And we provide the best uh, customer experience that we are able. Um, and um, by by doing that, uh, we're trying to create uh, not we're not just trying to provide banking service, services purely. Uh, we're trying to create an ecosystem for our customers that will cover cover much broader um, much broader uh, product range or much broader uh, services. And also one of the reasons why we started being involved in the open banking, why we started opening our APIs. Uh, was the regulatory objectives. So here we have three of them. It's not just PSD2 for us. Also, we have EAEU objective, which is uh, Russian and Belarusian uh, project uh, for developing API standards, for promoting APIs across financial institutions, across fintechs. 
And we have a local um, regulation, which is um, provided by National Bank of the Republic of Belarus. And um, it is very new. Uh, they just started um, drafting all the standards um, somewhat in uh, last year. Um, so basically, those three are, are the regulatory objectives that we have to comply with. And uh, they also shape the way how we approach open banking and uh, how we work um, with our FAIs. So let me also tell you a little bit about our, our journey uh, with FAIs. So in 2018, our bank was the first bank in Belarus to offer access to open data APIs. And immediately we offered two services, uh, which is currency and service point. Uh, currency was um, well, self-explanatory basically. Uh, so currency was um, the one to provide FX rates from our bank and FX rates from the National Bank of Belarus. And uh, the service point was basically the open data about our locations, working times and uh, different services that we provide as a bank. Uh, next year, in 2019, we integrated with our first part partner. Uh, it was the currency IP API integration. And uh, our partner's name is Mafin. And um, first, customers started using our APIs, uh, started joining our uh, platform. And uh, next year, uh, we moved further. We moved further in terms of um, not just providing uh, open data APIs, but also offering our customers a possibility to make payments through APIs and um, to uh, use their account information. And this same year, uh, the EAEU directive uh, was implemented and uh, we participated uh, in, we were one of the banks to participate in the project uh, for adoption of those standards uh, for our APIs. And uh, Moving further, uh, this year was the most um, uh, was uh, the most productive year for us, let's say, uh, because we introduced uh, new APIs uh, such as uh, FX platform uh, and also customer APIs, factoring APIs. So basically, with our experience throughout the uh, previous three years, we were able to uh, expand uh, our offering in terms of open API. And uh, also, uh, we started attracting more partners to our network, and um, this helped us to uh, pro to introduce uh, new services like international payments or tax filing service, uh, which were provided with um, jointly by us and our partners. Um, this year, also as I mentioned before, a National Bank of Belarus um, started this project for. Uh, setting up standards for payment APIs. So basically, it was not really standardized before, and there were not so many clear guidelines on how we are supposed to operate on a local market because open banking is quite a new topic, quite a new field for Belarusian market. So there was a lot of uncertainty. And um, this year, the National Bank created a so-called focus group um consisting of some of the local banks who wanted to participate who wanted to test uh, the guidelines that they were providing and uh, we also participated we were one of the banks uh, um, who um, who did the testing who worked on the um, on the documents together with the national bank and the project is uh, basically right now at the completion stage so we are expecting um, later this year or beginning of next year to finally have a very clear regulatory um, requirements from, from our national bank. Uh, uh, and also we will, we will have to also adjust our current uh, systems, our current uh, APIs in order to comply. Uh, another important event uh, that happened this year is our group uh, bank um, our uh, our rbi group bank um, in austria our headquarter bank introduced a so-called uh, marketplace api marketplace which is um, a common space for all the groups for all the networking uh, banks uh, to 
publish their APIs, uh, to share their APIs, share experience. So this is basically like the big marketplace uh, working as a network to connect our customers with APIs provided from different countries. Um, and for us to collaborate more closely on, on the development. And um, also this year, um, we are going through WSO migration uh, to a new version. So there was also a big project for us. Um, okay, uh, so here, um, I mentioned previously that uh, one of our core values uh, is our customers. And um, in order to uh, be as helpful as we can for our customers, we decided to introduce this the concept of ecosystem uh, also in our bank. Uh, basically, what we mean by the ecosystem is that uh, we don't want to just focus on um, on financial services. We don't want to be just bank in terms of um, in terms of this. We want to go further and uh, we want to give more value to our customers. So um, we have four objectives that we are, um, that we're looking at every day, um, working on our APIs and uh, developing our APIs. So um, those four are, um, first of all, uh, we want our customers to be able to use any external software as a single point of contact to use our products and services. So basically, we don't want them to be using their ERP systems or accounting systems, and then having to log into the, into their internet banking. So different um, resource, different uh, web page, or different application. We want them to be able to just use the software that they use every day, and um, and that's it. We want to simplify it for our customers, and uh, we know how important it is for business because it saves time. It's more convenient. Um, so this, this is the first objective that we have. Um, second one is we want to expand our partnerships because um, banking uh, in a traditional way is, um, I think like for us, it seems like it's not there anymore. So uh, currently banks are trying to be way more than just a bank. Also a financial con consultant for the client, a tax consultant or a accounting consultant. So basically it's all the wide range of consultancy and supporting services that we can offer that go beyond regular traditional banking. And by that, um, th this can be really uh, achieved uh, easily with APIs. And we see a huge potential in here and we already have some results um, uh, in our in our work, we already attracted um, some partners. Uh, now we're able to um, be uh, very supportive to our clients, and um, basically by that um, we see that uh, customers will not uh, have to have many bank accounts, have many business bank accounts. Let's say so, uh, they can just use our bank and uh, get all the services uh, they that they need um and uh, this is the the, the retention rate uh, of customers really rises because of that uh so for us it's really important to be to be like the only one uh also we want uh, to provide the fully digital access uh, to banking uh so we don't want our clients to to have to actually physically go to branches uh, or um, uh, also we want um, our customers to just be able to um, use their just their computer to receive all the banking services and also remotely um, that also saves time and uh, this is uh, one of the things that clients value the most um, and as well um, we are working really hard on being able to provide all our products through APIs because for now we're, we are just in the development stage. Uh, so we offer payment APIs, account APIs, FX, but there are so many more banking products that we have. And um, this is why we uh, try to develop new APIs and uh, try to um, really expand uh, our offering. And um, 
uh, as one of the examples that I wanted to mention, which um, we started implementing and basically we are finished. Um, so this is uh, the, the case of uh, providing end-to-end -end services uh, to, to one of the customer segments. Basically, uh, those are uh, entrepreneurs, sole proprietors. And uh, our aim, our goal uh, was to um, was to have uh, uh, to give a chance uh, for these customers to uh, do everything to join our bank remotely and uh, to be able to do their business through our bank um, remotely and very easy. So we introduced a remote account opening for these clients um, and. Um, also um, combined with the integration with their ERPs or their accounting software, uh, we are giving them uh, more value because they save time. Again, so like throughout my whole presentation, like time matters and um, it's very important for us to, to give easy solutions for clients. Uh, so three, um, three features of, uh, of this project is as a client uh, can come and um, don't have to come, but can uh, open account remotely, can integrate uh, their systems uh, with our banking uh, data. And another um, nice feature that we introduce is uh, automatic time um, tax filing. Basically the account of a client is integrated with a partnership software and uh, they're able to file their taxes uh, just at one uh, touch point. So uh, they don't have to uh, go through a whole complicated process because this is quite a complicated one in our country. And um, basically, yes, as a result, um, they, they save time. It's very convenient, it's very fast. And um, for us, uh, it gives a great value because the attraction rate of customers uh, has really increased. Okay. So we, uh, when we started our journey, we had um, we had a need uh, to um, to. We had a need for some platform, for some software uh, that could help us uh, develop our APIs, uh, manage our APIs, uh, be secure and uh, comply with our internal banking regulations that we have in our company. Um, so I, I just wanted to um, mention a couple of words to explain why we chose the WSO. Um, well, first of all, and the most important one is that this was very uh, customizable. The portal was um, customizable in any way that we needed, basically starting from, from plain ones like interface, uh, and which is more important for us is um, registration process or access token customization because uh, the regulations that we have internal ones they are very specific so uh, it was important for us that the platform that we start using uh, helps us um, to helps us to offer our apis in a way that we would like to have um, also we really uh, like that it has a ready-made testing environment and uh, as I mentioned, high secu security standards. Uh, and moving further, uh, we, um, this, this has been, this has been, has proved itself to be efficient pr platform for us. So uh, now we're looking at using other product, products from WSO, uh, which is open banking. Uh, it is also very important for us. So another reason why WSO is uh, good for us as a bank um, is um, that all the products are integrated. Uh, it's easy for us to use. We get uh, we have a uh, quite a small team working on API development. So for us, it was really crucial that the WSO team is helping us and guiding us through the process. Uh, and basically by using that platform, um, we build the whole API infrastructure that we currently have in the bank. Uh, 